the inclusion agenda has increased the need for better differentiation methods to ensure that SEN pupils are taught as effectively as possible within mainstream classes. In this programme we will show how one school is approaching the challenge of achieving successful differentiation at primary level. Kingston Park Primary School in Newcastle has 16% of pupils with special educational needs and 25% for whom English is an additional language. The school is rated by Ofsted as having an outstanding ethos and commitment to inclusion. Inclusion has become a little bit of a buzzword, but it's something that we've always done here, and that's partly because of the geography of the school, partly because of the ethos of the school. You have to be very careful about the words that you use, and we think that the vocabulary that adults use is very, very important. So we don't separate children with the words we use. We don't talk about units or special needs rooms or areas because we believe that all children are special. It's absolutely crucial that the relationship between everybody in school is as one. When people come into the school, they say that there's a family feel to the school, and I do believe that's true. And the good qualities about a good family is that they look out for each other and they don't leave anybody behind. And I think that's what this school's about. Within the air groups, um, the teachers differentiate their work into three broad bands. Then on their planning sheet, they have an additional column. And in that column, they'll highlight children who might have special educational needs, might have medical needs or physical needs, might have English as an additional language, or be gifted and talented. And in that part of the planning sheet, they identify the work that they've planned for those children and also the support that's go going to be given. It is an additional workload, but it's shared. So the way that the staffing's organised will have more than, than one teacher doing the planning. So across a year group, the work is the same work that's planned for two classes. So the teachers are halving that. In a lot of year groups, there might be a third teacher works with that year group, so it can be shared three ways. And then some of the higher level support assistants would take a role in differentiating that work. The importance which the school puts on collaboration between teaching staff is reflected in the time allocated for planning, with weekly after school planning meetings taking place in addition to PPA time. Year 6 teacher Kirsty is meeting with TA Julie to plan next week's literacy lesson. We need to look at, um, in Year 6, complex sentences, but I, I'm not sure whether the children are ready to do those. Perhaps some of the red group children, what do you think? So we'll talk generally about what we're going to be doing and then we'll look specifically at individual children so that we're meeting their needs. That would be good, using the pegs, because he sometimes finds that difficult, yeah, so it yeah. would be quite good practice for his OT skills. The school's special needs coordinator is Suzanne Gould. One part of her role is to spend one-to-one -one time with individual children. It can give an extra perspective on the child's progress, which can then help the teacher when differentiating her lessons with the needs of that child in mind. When Suzanne's been working with some of the children, she's able to spend a little bit more focused time with them and can then look at particular things that they might have on their targets which we can incorporate into the lessons. My aims of working with the children is to sort of assess where I think they're up to and the progress that they're making and to then from that say, sort of advise in the classrooms activities that I think would be beneficial for the, for the children to do. I complete sort of activities with them that I know are also going on in class. I assess where I think they are and I from that feed back to the class teacher and the support staff of, of what I feel they could do you know, with me on a regular basis. Well done, you did a lovely push there. The key elements to making 
differentiation work in your class are talking to your colleagues, talking to the children and having the resources in place for the children so that at the start of each lesson they are ready to learn. Today's literacy lesson is focused on writing in an autobiographical style. In the lesson, the first thing that I always do, and I do this in every lesson, is explain to the children what their main activity is going to be. I do that even before we talk about lesson objectives, because lesson objectives can be quite intimidating for children, especially children who've got special needs. The main thing that we're going to be doing today is we're going to be improving, editing, redrafting our writing. What does that mean? Connor? Um, like on your piece of paper and don't make any mistakes. What have we got to do first, Carly? Correct the spelling. Right, let's have a look at our objective. We're going to secure skills of writing in an autobiographical style. Richard, who do we write about when we're writing an autobiography? Yourself. Yourself. If you're writing about yourself, think about the words that you might use, Jenny. Um, what kind I, of words are you writing about yourself? Me. me. You said you were right when you said I. But we might I, use about ourselves. You. Good. Well done. Uh, part of differentiation and part of assessment for learning is asking more open questions where there isn't just one answer. I've got a sentence on the board over here. Want to have a look? Every day I walk to school. Now I've written there adverbs. What do you think adverbs do? And so you, you're valuing the children's input there and that's really helpful in terms of special needs children because they might not know an answer that's a definite answer but they'll certainly have an opinion that they can share with you. But an easy way to think about adverbs is that Lee words are adverbs, right? So they add to the verb. So can anyone think of any Lee words that we could write down on the board? Rachel? Excitedly. Excitedly, that's a good one. The children who have special needs might need their target explained to them, but they can be involved with developing a success criteria as well because they're fully involved in what the lesson has been about. If I was doing the writing, what would I need to make sure I do? Rachel? Use a chatty style. Right, OK. So one way to do that is by saying hello at the beginning. In this lesson, I'm working with children who are from the lower ability group, but they are paired with children who are from higher ability groups, so that if I can't work with them all at the same time, they've got somebody who can support them if necessary. And I've, so I've done that as well. And then now I wonder what will happen in the future. I will be a marine life. Yeah, I do think carefully about who's going to work with another child because you've got to look for a child who is more supportive, who, who might um, themselves benefit from working with somebody else. So a child like Rachel would benefit from supporting Richard because she's very caring and kind and it would enable her to take the lead because she's also quite quiet. So it Richard benefits because he gets a good role model who is good at speaking English and, and has good ideas, but he also benefits because she's patient and, you know, a hard worker at the same time. You're working with Rachel, so listen to Rachel. Would you like to walk to school, Richard? Silently. Silently, that's a good word. Silently. For children who are just beginning writing, I would use breakthrough writing, which is basically keywords on card which the children put onto a breakthrough stand to make their own sentence. And if they want extra words, we can write those down and they've got to read that sentence back to you before they can write it down. I will let you to write that sentence, but I'm going to hide it from you. So you're going to write it all by yourself. Are you ready? You've looked at the words enough. So I'm going to hide the sentence. Teachers have done a lot of work about assessment for learning over the last two years. Um, we use a range of strategies. We use close the gap marking. Um, we've, we've reviewed target setting and marking systems so that children are assessing their own work. Have you finished your sentence? Tell me what it says then. Next. 
Excellent. Charlene, do you want, can you pass us the stand so we can check? I, oh, you've written I would like, it's my fault. I thought you'd written I want. I would like to live on a canal boat. Brilliant. Okay. You tried that one all by yourself. Self-assessment is really vital for all the children because they, just as you have dialogue with other adults and colleagues in school, you've got to have dialogue with the children to get a sense of what they've understood from the lesson that you've done. Show me what you think. How are our faces doing today? Oh, I've got lots and lots of smiley faces. Corey's being very honest and so is Amy. They're saying they've got a straight line. I've got questions which are standard que assessment for learning questions that I can um, change, adapt for particular children. Um, and it's important that through questioning, we include all of the children so that everyone gets an equal opportunity to, to share what they've been doing in the lesson. What about you, Richard? Which one would you pick? You've been writing an autobiography. Because what bit do you know? You know you writing, your writing is about you, about who? Me. All about you. OK. You're quite happy for me to... After the lesson, uh, Kirsty and Julie sit down to evaluate how it's gone. The feedback session is also an opportunity to discuss the pupils' individual education plan, or IEP. We spoke about, you know, who we were writing about and what sort mm. of words we could mm. put into the sentences. Mm. I think it's a good idea to give him a clue beforehand what we're going to be doing because then he can be fully involved in the session. Um, the information that support staff bring to an evaluation is just as critical as the teaching staff. Even the anecdotal evidence of groupings and how people are getting on in the group it's important because you might have two children working together who may appear to be getting on, but, you know, on closer examination might not be the best pairing in order to facilitate their own learning. I can't check on everybody all at the same time, but they can tell me what they think. But Richard's still thinking that smiley faces... I think he thinks it means he's happy. Yes. He still, yeah. he still doesn't which, under, really understand how we... Which is fair enough, them. but in terms of what we've asked him to do you know, writing about himself, he probably is quite smiley because yes. he has tried and he has tried to, to read his own writing as well, so that's yeah. quite good. Did he pick his target? He did. He chose the target himself. I mean, I read both the targets to him and he said he wanted that target. Did he pick um, read my own writing? Yes, yes, he did. We're constantly refining and developing our ideas. We are always striving for excellence. Change is an essential part of improving provision and obviously with the new Every Child Matters, we're constantly looking to work with other services to improve the level of education that we can provide for children with special educational needs. Logistically, uh, it's a nightmare but it, and it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and it takes an enormous amount of concentration to make sure that you've got the right people in the right places at the right time. You've got to think of every detail and if you don't get it right it doesn't work. Mm -hmm.